Today's video is going to be a little bit different. So instead of doing a performance and a tutorial, I'm just going to be doing a tutorial. Now the reason I'm not doing a performance is because the performance wouldn't look as good on camera with the amount of room and space I have. However, this is still a very nice effect, which I think all of you should learn. Now, the cards I'm going to be using for today's video are the GT Speed Readers, the Red Edition. I have a deck review on these. That link will be in the description. I won these from Sean Devine as part of a brick giveaway. So Sean's channel and that unboxing are both in the description. So for this effect, you're going to need just one thing. And that one thing is a double backer. If you're newer to Magic, or even if you're not newer, but you don't own many decks that come with a double backer, but you would like to have some um, ideas, I'm going to leave my latest video in the description of talking about cards I own that come with double backers. So the only setup is the double backer on the bottom of the deck, and you're set to go. So, when you go up to your participant with this a uh, setup, you could call it, you can do any false shuffles and or cuts you would like. Just leave the double backer on the bottom. I will link in the description some false cuts. After you have done some of those, you're going to have a card selected. Now you can really have any card except the bottom card selected. So some ideas here are a dribble, which I will leave a link for, they call stop, and they can either take this face down card or they can take this face up card. You could have them call stop as you riffle down the deck and then do the same thing. They could even cut the cards and take either one. And the last thing you can do is just spread out about half of the cards and instruct them to take a card. So let's say they go through and they take this card. Now it's up to you if you want the card signed, okay? So in this case, we have the five of spades. While they are looking at their card, you can either do this after they look at their card or while they are looking at their card. But what you're going to do is you're going to take about half the deck and you're going to take this bottom half and set it down. So this uh, half of the deck from the top of the deck doesn't contain that double backer. So that stays right here off to the side. This top half, you're going to spread it face up like this. And you can really do any pattern you would like about spreading the cards face up. But you're going to grab this bottom half. And what you're going to want to do is take the card back, place it on the bottom of the deck where the double backer is, and then turn it over. A few things here is number one, you don't want to turn the deck over and then place the double backer on just because they see back of the card, back of the card, they're going to get uh, confused. And another thing is when the card is on the bottom and you turn it over, you want to be careful something like this doesn't happen. So you accidentally flash that card. So what I do is I take their card, I hold it in my hand, the other deck, I just drop it on top, I square up everything, and then I turn it over, and I keep it in a tight grip, but not too tight to make it look suspicious, just to not spread that double backer. So the move you're going to want to do now is the double lift. If you're not familiar with the DL double lift, I have a few videos on it, link in the description. I will also link the pinky count because that's a great way to get into a double lift. 
But either way you want to do it, you're going to perform your double lift. So they think the five is still on top when it's in fact that double backer and then that five. What you're going to have to do now is take off this top card, but avoid flashing the second card. So essentially you're going to do like a wrist kill. Now a move I think might work good is the KM move. If you're not familiar with that, I will link it in the description. But real quick, I'm going to turn my hand in like this and then sort it down. So this is what I would be doing. But I'm going to expose it. You're going to lift up slightly on this card, okay? Just until one or two of your fingers are under. Not too much because of that. And once you have this grip, your uh, hand here holding the deck is just going to come down and away. Obviously, make sure you don't drop any cards like that. But if you do it like this and you don't make it look suspicious, they're not going to uh, really think of anything. So now what you're going to do, if you're confident with this, you can hand this to the participant and tell them here, go ahead and place your card anywhere in the half you would like. And if you feel like they're not going to turn it over, that's great because it's the double backer. If you feel like they will turn it over, but you still want them to have a little bit of freedom, you can say here, I'm going to go across and you just call out stop. And wherever they call stop, you're just going to place it about halfway in. Or if you want, you could just place it in anywhere. But now you're going to have the rest of the deck still face down with their card face up on the bottom. So at this point, you're going to have to do another move. But in order to cover it, I'm going to do some misdirection. So I say, okay, now participant, I want you to see that all of the cards are really different here. And you could have really placed your card anywhere you would like. How about you go ahead and just... Search some cards at the top and some at the bottom just to make sure your card doesn't appear. But just leave your card in the middle where it is. Okay, so you can really use any excuse you would like. That's a line I've used and it has worked. Because they may think maybe you have their card appear multiple times somewhere. Okay, so really anything goes. But you're going to do sort of like a side angle jog move. So you're going to come over into side. I'm not too sure the name of this grip. I want to say. Actually, I'm not too sure. I was thinking the biddle grip. But I think that's a little different. But it doesn't matter. You're going to come into the side grip here. Index, middle, on top, thumb at the bottom. Your fingers are going to slide this bottom card all the way over about halfway and your pinky will be able to latch onto it. Watch your angles with this one and then all you're going to do is just give the cards a cut. I'll leave a link for the swing cut and then <clears throat> you're going to set the deck down and give it one spread and this is actually going to conceal a their card hidden right behind the spread. So that is a good thing about this move. It can actually hide their card. Now you can play around with it to see which works the best. But once they're done up here, you can tell them, okay. So as you can see down here, all of the cards are face down. But we're going to try something here. Now, you would perform both of these moves simultaneously at the same time. However, because of the, um, I guess you could say space, it's not going to look as good. So, here is what you're going to do one move at a time. Essentially, you would come to both ends of the packet or both beginnings of the packet and you would just do a ribbon spread with the top half here to turn it over. And because that double backer is face down, when you do that spread, it's then going to turn all the cards of face down. 
But at the same time, when you turn this half uh, over, because that card was face up, now it's going to look like in the face up half, one card is face down. And if you do them together simultaneously at the same time, it's going to look really good and it's going to be a really great effect. So look up the, the ribbon spread and turnover if you're not familiar with it. I don't have a video on it. I'm not going to teach it just because of this uh, space, but that is what you're going to do. And you can check out the original tutorial video in the description to get a much better look at what this move looks like. But after you have done the reveal here, you can ask them to name their card for the first time. They say the five of spades. They can turn it over. And if it's signed, that's even better. But indeed, the five of spades. And that is the effect. So I hope you really enjoyed this effect. A little bit advanced, but it's really worth it at the end. Let me know also if you like this sort of new format of not always doing performances, just tutorials. And if you do want me to do uh, just performances in one video and then tutorials in another video, let me know your thoughts on all of that. If you are new here, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time with another video. Bye.